The Daily Signal is coming to you live from the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're joined now by Dr. Ben Carson, the former secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development and a speaker on Tuesday night. Dr. Yeah. Carson, thanks for being with us. Well, very always good to be with you guys. You bet. Uh, well, let me uh, let me ask you this. As you're looking out at that sea of people last night delivering your speech, uh, what goes through your mind in a moment like that? Well, first of all, there was an enormous amount of energy in that auditorium. People were really excited. And uh, there have been some really good speeches that had come through. And the theme is unity and safety and logic and common sense and what you can do as an individual in your sphere of influence. Uh, all of that was going on. And it's energizing when you're the speaker. You know, I said a lot of things that I wasn't planning on saying. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about what you mean by that. I, 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 I mean, because of what happened Saturday, uh, meaning you, you, you shifted uh, what you were planning to say, or just yeah. in that moment, you, you well, felt called well, to say just something in else? In the moment, you, you felt inspired. Like when I closed and I talked about Alexis de Tocqueville. I wasn't planning to do that, <laughs> but it seemed so appropriate and it fit so well with the other things that I had said. And, um, but, you know, the really key thing that's going on now is I think our country is poised for a revival. We've had four revivals historically, usually surrounding pestilence or war. Uh, we're ripe. And I think people are seeing that our country is spiraling downward because of the path that we've taken. And maybe we need to readjust our path. We need to go back and look at our founding document, the Declaration of Independence. It talks about how our rights come from our creator, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, you know, our Pledge of Allegiance says we're one nation under God. All the money in our pocket coins and cash, it says, in God we trust. So maybe there's something to this. And, uh, you know, the fact that we went from a ragtag bunch of militiamen to the pinnacle of the world in record time was not a coincidence. And we weren't trying to be like everybody else. We had our unique American identity. And it encompassed a whole variety of different cultures. But it had a unifying force behind it. It, it, yes, it certainly seems that way. And I'll tell you, as we talk to people, it seems that the thing that's appealing about Donald Trump in particular is that he's not your traditional candidate, obviously. Sure. But as a result of that, there are different segments of the American people who wouldn't normally vote Republican who are willing to give him a shot. Because, first of all, they say, look, life was actually pretty good during his first term in office. Things have gotten much worse. And this revival that you speak of, I think the American people are, are, are maybe you know clamoring for it, big changes. I think, I think we're ripe for it right now. And... I think people are tired of the divisiveness, you know, on the basis of age, income, race, gender, religion, political affiliation. You decide that you love or you hate somebody based on those things. Uh, and that is not the way that we have traditionally done things. And we have not had litmus tests in terms of who is your neighbor. You're supposed to love your neighbor. Uh, that means anybody who's near you who needs help. And the Bible makes that very clear. Everybody is your neighbor. And uh, it really is considerably easier to be a considerate, kind, and loving person than it is to be a nasty, hateful person. And anybody who doubts that, just try it. Give yourself a little test. Uh, say for 24 hours, I'm going to be nice to everybody I encounter. That includes your spouse. Be nice to everybody for 24 hours and see how that feels uh, compared to uh, not being nice. I think you'll see a big difference. As a, as a medical doctor, I, I, I'd like to ask you uh, about uh, what happened Saturday. I, you spoke about it in, in your convention speech. Obviously, I think many of us who are believers uh, think that God intervened in some way to, to save the former president's life. Absolutely. Um, but how does a moment like that change somebody? So like, in, I mean, Donald Trump has talked about how, yeah. how blessed he is to be here with us today. Well, when you realize that 
you were within millimeters of death. It's a very sobering feeling. And, uh, you know, the bulletproof George Washington, you know, same kind of story. And he realized, and he said, divine providence has spared my life. You know, he had four bullet holes in his coat. He had bullet fragments in his hair and no wounds. And he knew that that was impossible. And uh, I think President Trump also realizes that. I've told him for years that God had prepared him to help save the United States of America. I think he really believes it now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly seems that way. Uh, what role do you anticipate having uh, in the months to come as the election uh, proceeds, well, and then maybe even in a second Trump term? <laughs> you know, I have always committed myself to trying to save our country for those who are coming after us, realizing all the sacrifices that people made who came before us. And that will continue to be my commitment. Uh, which mechanism is used to do that remains to be seen. But it will be something good. <laughs> you have a great organization in Washington, D.C., not too far from our offices at the, at the Daily Signal. Uh, tell our viewers about that or how they can support some of the work that you're doing. Yeah, the American Cornerstone Institute, AmericanCornerstone.org. Uh, please go and check it out. And uh, you'll find on there uh, so much material, uh, white papers on virtually all the relevant topics of things that are going on today. Uh, there's a children's section called Little Patriots, which teaches children all about our history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But of course, there's a lot more good than there is bad and ugly. Sometimes people just extract the bad and ugly and try to make it all about that. And um, we have My American Story, uh, live interviews with a number of people who came from communist and socialist countries, and they talk about what it was like and some of the dangers that they see occurring in our society that may lead us into the same direction, all those kinds of things. And the key thing is, it's free. Uh, the Star Sprangled Adventures, which is a beautiful cartoon series uh, done by wonderful animators that we got from places like Disney and Pixar, ones who were not woke, by the way. And uh, these things are so entertaining when little children see them. They always say the same thing, can I see another episode? <laughs> but at the same time, they're learning about who we are as people, what our history are, and hopefully we'll inspire them to achieve great things as well. Well, I, I, I know you are as the father of three kids. I mean, you, certainly it's, it's, um, uh, it, it's important for organizations like yours to do that because the institutions that have traditionally catered to that audience uh, have, are failing us. The traditional right. media, Hollywood, you can go down the list. And so right. it takes people like you to step in and fill that void. And so we are grateful for, for right. what you're doing and, uh, and your service in the past and, uh, and look forward to what's on the horizon in the future. And we appreciate Daily Signal and your attempt to do things in a truthful and even-handed way. Well, thank you, sir. Dr. Ben Carson joining us from the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. For The Daily Signal, I'm Rob Bluey, and we will be back soon.